Hi, this is Morley and this is the M-Wire with a very important update on what's going on in the war in Ukraine. Now folks, I readily admit that the hardest part of reporting on this is disseminating the truth from the propaganda because as you well know, there's a lot out there. That essentially consists of me basically cross-referencing a story with other sources that I trust and seeing the variances in the reporting and when I see a consensus like two or three more sources that I actually know and trust then I will essentially deem that to be a factual article and then and only then will I present it to you now there is an awful lot going on right now folks an awful lot I mean, the Western media paints this one way and the Russian media paints this quite another. But one thing that I can say with the utmost confidence is this conflict in Ukraine is not going to be a short one. This has been going on for two weeks now and there is absolutely no sign of this stopping anytime soon, which is bad for everybody involved. Speaking of which, more and more countries have the potential to get involved, but more on that later. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so, folks, as that would greatly help promote the channel and the algorithm. Leave a like, share, comment, all that usual stuff. Um, people are being unsubscribed from the channel. That's, that's the platform's par for the course for channels such as mine. So could you please make sure that if you are subscribed... Make sure the notification bell is clicked so you will be notified when I upload new content. If you're not already subscribed, folks, you need to get M-Wired and hit that subscribe button. Please do that for me. In addition, a longtime subscriber of mine has asked me to give a shout out to his dad, who does a blog weekly on Russia and Ukraine. I highly suggest that you check it out. His dad's insight on this is dare I say it, unique. I mean, he's postulated things that I haven't even so much as thought of. So if you want some very insightful reading on what's going on in Ukraine, his blog comes out every Monday, I'm going to post the link to it in the pinned comments of this video. Please check that out. His dad would greatly appreciate it, and as would I. Now, the fighting in Ukraine still continues, and it's quite feverish. There are different cities that have fallen under Russian occupation, but I must hand it to the people of Ukraine that are taking up arms and defending their country. It is absolutely incredible to see the spirit of the Ukrainian people repelling what is happening in Russia. Now, I know there are a lot of different perspectives on who's to blame here and what's going on and U.S. involvement and all that. And you know what? I am welcome to all of those opinions in the comments, folks. As I've said in many prior videos, your comments provide a sounding board for me to compare and contrast my thoughts with yours. Whether or not I agree with them is irrelevant but at least I get to see what the consensus is as to what people think is really going on with this conflict. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about what's been happening economically as far as the sanctions go. Well, yes, the gas and oil from Russia has been sanctioned by the United States. And for the life of me, I do not understand why the so-called president of the United States is looking first to countries such as Venezuela and the United Arab Emirates. Reportedly, Brandon placed a call to the United Arab Emirates to obviously broker a deal to perhaps buy some oil. And do you know what happened? They wouldn't even take his call. That is a clear reflection as to how much respect that he doesn't have on the international stage. Why? For the life of me. Now I'm going to backtrack a little bit on this, but why for the life of me is he not approaching a country like Canada for oil? Doesn't that make more sense? But then again, we're talking about Brandon. Now, as you remember, folks, under 45, oil prices were consistently low between 40 and $50 a barrel. Why? Because he made this country self-sufficient 
for oil. Why doesn't that make sense to this administration? I, I don't understand it. One of the first things that he did when he became the so-called president is cancel the Keystone XL pipeline with Canada. Because he's touting this Green New Deal, I think in his mind that in a few years, cars will run on soy milk and everything will just be sublime and it'll just be butterflies and roses and zero emissions. Well, that's just not realistic. So now he's going to other dictatorships such as Venezuela, even Iran that he's about to offer a very sweet nuclear deal to, by the way. He's even so much as approaching them to get oil. Who is aligned with Russia? Do you see a problem with that? I do. I wonder how many palletfuls of cash with this new Iran nuclear deal there will be this time. Maybe five? Maybe ten? Who knows? But do you think for a second, given the fact that Iran is allied with Russia, that some of that money isn't going to Russia? Well, I'll let you draw your own conclusions about that. But I happen to think that some of that money would be funneled to the Kremlin. The obvious is that gas prices in this country are hitting the moon. 425 a gallon on average nationwide in places like California, we're talking more like $7. And then you have the likes of Stephen Colbert on his talk show saying that he doesn't care if oil goes up to $300 a barrel because he drives an over $100,000 electric car. Well, he happens to make over $15 million a year, which is a very small group of people in his tax bracket if you get my proverbial drift. That was the most asinine comment I've seen in recent memory from any talk show host. That simply is not feasible for most Americans. I mean, the simple answer to this is the higher tax bracket that you so happen to be in, the less you care what gas costs. Do you agree with that, folks? Let me know in the comments. If you're making $500,000 a year, well, even if the price of gas doubles, yeah, that isn't exactly great news, but you're not going to feel it. You're not going to feel it in your, in your food budget. The, the physiological needs of basically living, you're not going to feel it there. But to somebody who makes less than $100,000 a year, well, you're absolutely going to feel it, especially if you have a family. So... People with families especially are going to feel the pinch of this. There's no getting around it. I mean, we live in, most of us live in large cities, so a car is almost a necessity to avoid a two or three hour commute to and fro from work every day, saying nothing of your obligations to say, pick your kids up from school. And it reflects on everything. I mean, things get to our stores by trucks. Planes run on fossil fuels. That's just a stark reality. Yet the Biden administration seems to think that this is Putin imposing these on you. Uh, no, no, it's not. Because America could have retained its independence on foreign oil if they simply went ahead with the Keystone Pipeline. Well, because, as I said... Brandon seems to think that everything's going to run on soy milk in the near future. That's why he quashed it almost immediately after he took the oath of office. Now, folks, I hate to say this, and I don't mean this to be fear-mongering or anything, but this has a very, very high potential at this time to become a full-on world war. There are already other countries getting involved indirectly, uh, such as Russia has basically conscripted, if you will, Syrians to help fight in this war. Now, Putin's miscalculation is that he thought this would be quick, and the only thing reason why this isn't quick is because of the resolve of the Ukrainian people. They are fighting back ferociously to repel this attack, but it's almost a case now of he's in too deep. He just can't, you know, turn around and go back and, well, you know, apologize for invading Ukraine. 
I mean, we are well, well past that. He still continues to spout demands what will end this war, which is essentially giving over the Donbass and Luhansk regions to Russia, and essentially he's claimed even more land. Also, he wants the Crimea recognized as Russian territory, which he took from them in 2014, as you're, most of you are probably well aware. As well as, he wants there to be amendments to the Ukrainian constitution citing neutrality, meaning that he doesn't want them to join NATO, and he claims that if these conditions are met, his forces will just pack up and leave Ukraine. Well, we have no reason to believe him at this point because he said repeatedly that he had no intentions of invading Ukraine to begin with. Well, he has. There have been three, perhaps even four attempts to establish quote-unquote humanitarian corridors for civilians to leave Ukraine, and the refugees are approaching two million at this point, folks. But that has all been a ruse, too, because he has absolutely and positively attacked these people as they are simply trying to flee the country and want nothing to do with this war. Folks, if there was a war crime tribunal right now on Putin, he is probably guilty of, I would say, a minimum of six crimes against humanity. That is the stark reality. Will he ever stand trial for this? Probably not. He's a very wealthy man, and my guess is if things go really south for Mr. Putin, he has no shortage of bunkers that he can hide in and, and remain perfectly safe. That's just the stark reality and what's incidental of being a billionaire. This conflict is in such a precarious situation right now because other countries are getting borderline involved. And when I say other countries, I'm talking about NATO countries. The moment, you can write this down if you want to, the moment a NATO country gets involved in this, this is officially a world war. Because Putin is not going to accept any NATO interference at this point. It's bad enough that NATO countries are supplying Ukraine with arms and whatnot. He's somewhat tolerant of that. But establishing a no-fly zone over Ukraine is not a good idea right now. That would essentially mean that NATO countries, if they see or detect any Russian planes over Ukraine, that they would shoot them down and he would consider that an act of war. He already borderline considers the sanctions against him to be an act of war, but he is just simply sanctioning back, if you will, to the best of his ability for now. Folks, as I said in the beginning of this video, this is going to be a very long and very sustained war. This is not going to be over quickly. That's just the stark reality of it. We need to pray for the world. I mean, I know that sounds so cliche, but I mean, prayer does work, folks. We need to pray for Ukraine. We need to pray for the world leaders to come to their senses somehow and put an end to this madness. Don't forget who's in control here, and that be the Almighty God himself. I hope I've put this information to you in a cohesive fashion. I know I was kind of all over the place, but folks, there is just so much coming out about this. And as I say, I like to disseminate what is true from the propaganda, as well as make a very clearly defined line in the sand where the facts of the story end and my opinion begins. But thank you so much for coming along with me to this update. Please remember to like, to comment, to share, and of course to subscribe. And until the next update, God bless.